Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with potstickers. That's right, I love all sorts of dumplings, but these are probably my favorite and perfect for people that can't decide whether they want fried dumplings or steamed dumplings, since these are fried and steamed and then actually fried again. And don't even get me started on the amazingly flavorful, easy to make pork filling, which is exactly what we're gonna get started with. And we'll begin with one pound of freshly ground pork to which we'll add some finely minced garlic, as well as some sliced green onions. And this time we can use the light and the green parts. And then we're also gonna want lots of very finely chopped ginger. And I know we usually grate that on the microplane, but this time I want you to take a knife and chop it up until it's nice and fine like you see here. But anyway, we'll continue on by adding some soy sauce, as well as a little touch of sesame oil, which we always wanna be careful of since that really can overpower things. And then of course it never hurts to put in a nice shake of cayenne. And then last but not least, we're gonna add a whole bunch of finely chopped up green cabbage. Or at least that's what I used. You could probably use any kind you want. Savoy, Napa, even the red cabbage, which is really purple. So that's up to you. You are after all the binging with babish of your cabbage. And then once all that's in there, we'll take a fork and mix this until combined. And yes, we could use our hands, but whenever we're mixing meat, we wanna be careful not to overwork it. Okay, I want a nice tender filling in these pot stickers, and not a tough rubbery meatball. So I find with this method, there's a little less mashing of the meat. And also we don't have the heat from our hands warming the fat. So we'll go ahead and fork this mixture and fork it good until we're sure everything's thoroughly combined. At which point we'll clean up the sides and sort of pat it down. And then what we'll do is wrap this in plastic and transfer it into the fridge while we make our dough. And not only is this stuff easier to work with cold, it will also give it time for all those flavors to sort of mingle together. You know, just like a party's not that great when everyone first gets there. Same idea. So we'll pop that in the fridge and start our very, very simple dough. And all we're gonna need for that is a couple cups of all-purpose flour, to which we'll add a little bit of salt. And then last but not least, some hot water. Okay, it doesn't have to be boiling. You can just use hot tap water or just microwave some till it's hot. And we'll go ahead and pour that in and give it a stir with a wooden spoon. And we'll keep stirring until it forms what we call in the business a shaggy dough. Which I don't know why, but is really fun to say. Shaggy dough. So we'll go ahead and mix that until it looks like this. At which point we'll flour our hand and transfer that onto a work surface. And then all we have to do is knead this until it comes together into a smooth elastic ball of dough. And when we do things like this, once out of every like a thousand times, we'll have the perfect amount of flour and water. But almost always we have to adjust, usually with more flour. So if we feel it's a little sticky, we'll stop and sprinkle a little more on. And we'll continue kneading, adding more if necessary. Until we have, as I said earlier, a fairly smooth, fairly elastic dough. Which is going to take, I don't know, three, four, five minutes? I guess it depends on how furious you need. But when you're done, it'll look something like this and sort of spring back to the touch. And then what we'll do once we've reached that point, or you just got tired of kneading and decided to stop, is we will wrap that in plastic and let it sit out just like that for 30 minutes. And you'll see when you come back to unwrap it, it's gonna be even smoother and more silky and just an absolute pleasure to work with. So 30 minutes later, we'll unwrap and proceed to divide it into four sections, which I'm just gonna do by eye, cause that's close enough. And as I think I mentioned, you're gonna be amazed at how silky smooth this gets with that 30 minute rest. I mean, it really does feel amazingly good. And it's at moments like this I get sad for people that don't cook because they will never feel this. But anyway, we'll divide that up. And then once that's set, what we'll do is take each of these pieces and roll them out until they're about the thickness of your thumb, unless you have like super small thumbs, which in that case, simply roll it out to whatever you think a normal thumb thickness is. And then each of these we'll divide into six. Just get them close, that's all we ask at which point we can finally start forming our pot stickers. So what we'll do first is take one of these pieces and roll it into a ball, and then sort of flatten it out into a disc. And then I'm gonna roll that out to about three and a half inches wide using the totally wrong rolling pin. Okay, this is much harder with a big rolling pin like this. What they really use is more like a thick wooden dowel. Okay, about the thickness of a broomstick. In fact, that's how you could make one, by just simply cutting the handle off a broom if you're not married. But the good news is it will still work, as long as you can still roll it out nice and thin to, like I said, approximately three and a half inches wide. 
And by the way, it does not have to be perfectly round. It just has to be round-ish. And then once that's set, we'll take our finger and dip it in a little bit of water and go around and moisten about the outside half inch. But not too much. We don't want it wet. We just want it sticky. And then once that's done, we can place down in the center a perfect portion of our meat. And I like a scoop because it's so much easier. And then what follows is my very unprofessional, yet highly effective way to seal these. What I like to do is press it together in the center and then pick it up like this. And then with my right hand, I'm simultaneously pinching and pressing into the other side. And don't worry, I'm going to show you this a few times. Plus, you can actually rewind on YouTube now. But basically, we're just pinching a little bit of dough together and then pressing it into the other side to seal it. And what that'll create is a set of pleats on one side without any pleats or folds on the other. And once we get that sealed, we can always go back and do some fine tuning, keeping in mind that no matter how bad you think these look, they always look amazing once they're cooked. So try to relax. And then once I've done that along the length, I'll make sure the bottom's nice and flat. And then with the pleated side away from me, we'll sort of bend each end back towards us to make a little bit of a curve, which not only looks cool, but it'll help them keep upright in the pan. And that's it. Let's try it again. So once we moisten and meet, we'll pick it up and press the center together, and then proceed with the old pinch, press, and pleat. And I fully admit I'm pretty terrible at doing this, but I really don't care, because like I said, they always still come out looking really nice. Having said that, I do encourage you to check out some videos and watch some pros doing this, because it's pretty impressive. But if you only do these once or twice a year like me, this may be about as good as it gets, which is absolutely fine. And by the way, if you're just not into any kind of special shaping or pleating, just simply press them together like a turnover with no pleating, and the rest of the procedure will still work. And what we'll want to do as we're making these is transfer them onto a well-floured plate. And I'm going to go ahead and stop at 7, because I want to show you the rest of this technique, and I'm starving. And yes, of course you can do these ahead. But anyway, that's the shaping phase, and we're now ready to proceed to the cooking and eating. And very ironically, I'll be cooking my pot stickers in a nonstick pan, into which we're going to drizzle a couple tablespoons of oil and place that over medium-high heat. And by the way, make sure you have a lid to cover these very close. And then what we'll do once our oil is hot is place these in flat side down, fancy side up, and we'll cook them for approximately two minutes or until the bottoms are golden brown. And we'll test by taking a look at them, which is one of the advantages of the nonstick pan. And in the traditional method, these are literally stuck to the bottom until we add the liquid. So like I said, we'll let these go for a couple minutes until the bottoms are golden brown, which mine were right here. And then what we're going to do is drizzle in a couple tablespoons of water and quickly cover these. And we will let them steam for about three minutes. And I said steam, not boil, which is why we only want a little bit of water. And then what we'll do after three minutes is uncover them, turn our heat down to medium, and continue cooking for another couple minutes until all the water's gone and the bottoms are absolutely gorgeously golden brown and crispy and crunchy and looking amazing, which I think these do. And that's it. Once we've completed the fry steam fry method, we'll go ahead and transfer those to a plate. Of course, with that gorgeous fried surface showing. I mean, what kind of crazy person would plate this that side down? And then once arranged, we need to add a little ramekin for our sauce, as well as maybe a few green onions for a little bit of color. Oh, and by the way, the recipe for the dipping sauce I'll give you on the blog, but it's simply equal parts rice vinegar and soy sauce. And that's it. We just made homemade pot stickers. And not only did these look great, they sounded great too. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. So let me go ahead and dip one in and go in for a taste. And man, were these good. That combination of textures between the crispy crunchy side and those softer tender sides is so interesting and so addictive and so amazing. And while very simple, that pork and cabbage filling is so flavorful and juicy. So even though I'm not that proficient at making these, I'm always absolutely thrilled with how they come out. And if you're thinking, that's too much work, isn't it easier just to get these from the takeout place? No, it's not. I ran the numbers. This is easier. If you factor in pleasure and satisfaction, which I did. And by the way, you can use this exact same technique for any kind of filling. Okay, imagine a cheeseburger pot sticker, or a Philly cheesesteak pot sticker, or five alarm chili pot sticker, or, well, you get the idea. But regardless, whether you use the traditional filling or not, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.